This time around, I'm back in the Val where there's a tight knit farming community. I'm visiting Loretta Fisachi. Uh, she's got livestock and farming vegetables and so many other different things on there. Uh, so, so many variables to look after. I want to see how she's managing all of this as a commercial farmer. Loretta. Hi, Tony. Hi, hi. Good morning, morning, morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. A bit chilly. It is, but it I'm is. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Welcome to King's Farmers. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I always travel with a bit of coffee, especially when it starts getting cold like this. I brought some. Would you like some? Well, that's nice. I would love some. Fantastic. It's cold, eh? Please, let's get some. Please, please, please. So, how did Loretta Visaki get into farming? My grandfather used to do farming. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, in the olden days, the farming was different from what how we farm now. Yeah. <laughs> to farm on was, with horses, you know, those olden days, yeah. uh, plows and stuff. So I stayed in uh, Springs. In Springs, I used to go to the auction and buy the small calves. Yeah. And bottle feed them, grow them up, you know, at my backyard. Actually accumulated, I think, about 10 of those calves. In your backyard? In my backyard. In, in the neighborhood. <laughs> in the neighborhood. <laughs> and then my neighbors, they yeah. started complaining. Yeah. I'm causing flies. They brought the health inspectors for me. <laughs> 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 and uh, they said, no, I have to get rid of them. So I went to the councillor, the local councillor there, and I asked for a piece of land. He gave me a piece of land. I just built a crawl and a room for my guy to stay there. They still complained. Because, <laughs> you know, the animals, they will still come towards the houses and graze. Yeah. Then I met this one lady at the auction, because Saturdays I used to go to auctions. She said, because you love animals so much, why don't you apply for a farm? I said, okay, give me the address. That was a Saturday. Mm. The Monday I was on the train <laughs> to Pretoria. <laughs> I went to apply. I went home. Month went past, there's no call. Second month, yeah. nothing doing. I took a train, I went back to them. I said, no, I can't wait that long. I've got a problem. My animals, I don't have a place to keep them. She said, no, there's nothing we can do. I went home. You know, my heart was, was broken because I really needed a farm. Mm. I said, no, man, this is land reform. There has to be a place, national. Yeah. If I can go <laughs> to national, maybe they'll help me. Yeah. I didn't know where national was in Pretoria. <laughs> but I went to Pretoria. I asked around, where is national? They showed me it wasn't far from the station where I jumped off. I went and I bought a box of tissues. I thought of the saddest thing, <laughs> something that made me sad years back that was the passing of my auntie. Yeah. I'm Loretta Fasaki, I'm from, you know, I just introduced myself. And I explained my story. I applied for a farm. I went home. A week went past, I think. I was called for an interview. Went for an interview. They said, okay, we'll let you guys know through post. And that year, I think it was in 2012, there was a strike with the post offices. Mm -hmm. And I waited for this letter, nothing. I decided to go back to them. The following week Thursday, I'll never forget, I was still busy doing ironing. Mm. The phone rang. Are you Loretta Fasaki? The lady, you know, she's a Kosa lady. She actually spoke Kosa. She said, Loretta, I'm from my name, I'm But she said, I'm from my that yours is Ananda, but I don't care where, where it is. is. <laughs> when can I be there? She mm. said, tomorrow morning, nine o'clock. I didn't know where Freya was, but that day I found it. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you get blessed with this piece of land with your farm. I'm sure you had challenges after that. Now I've got a farm that doesn't have anything. I'll get up in the morning, so chilly in the morning. I'll put on a jacket. I'll take my pliers, go around, fixing the fences right round the farm. Wherever I see a fence is down, I go to the bush, get a pole, dig, put in, I'm alone. Mm. Fix up the fences right round. Now, I have a farm to run. I don't have money. The little bit that I've got, Saturdays I'll go to the auction. Remember, my other cows are still in springs. I can't bring them here because I've got nobody to look after them. Mm. I'll go to the auction, buy these, uh, these old black and white cows. Yeah. I'll bring them home, go buy milk, I'll feed them. Grow up just two, three weeks, go to springs, go sell them that side. I'm raking up now cash flow for myself. Yeah. That's how it started. That's brilliant. You, 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 you sound very much like a, a hands-on person. You, 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 don't, you don't wait for somebody to do something for you. You do it yourself. I do it myself. I can work day and night. We have workers. If they knock off five o'clock, I take my tractor. Okay, you can knock off, I jump on my tractor. Uh, what if I have to disc? I'll disc through the night. They yeah. come seven o'clock they can carry on their work. So I have to do it. It's something I ask for. God has given it to me, so I must make use of it. 
So you're a hands-on person. Did you receive any formal training at all, Loretta? Yes, actually I've done animal production, mm -hmm. maize production through FCRI, which I am working with them. I get loans from them every year to work all my lands, and then after harvesting and then I pay them. I've yeah. been working with them since, since I've started this operation. Yeah, okay, so we are, what are we now, seven years, nine years in? Seven years planting, yeah. I am on a farm nine years. Nine the years. first two years I wasn't working, I was just fixing up the place. Yeah, mm. your daughter is with you now on the farm. Uh, speak to me about your, your family and how you convinced her in particular to come and join you in this operation. It was uh, easy because it's one child, I've, I've God has really blessed me. She's a very obedient somebody. So I said to her, look, there's no jobs. At least if you guys come to the farm, learn the trade, God forbid something happens to me, or even if I go on pension, you guys can still carry on with the farm. Oh, my mother, oh my mother. She's a busybody. She can be a handful. She never wants to sit down and rest. Lunch time, <laughs> knocking off time, no, Yena, she don't know that. She just wants you to carry on. I think she also wants to charge my batteries also. I don't know. <laughs> she just wants you to work and work and work. But one thing about her, she's a very wonderful person, a loving mother, and she loves people a lot. Most of them are challenges that we face here on the farm. It's uh, especially irrigation, water in the garden. Sometimes we get up in the morning, then there's no light. Most of the water irrigation, it works with electricity. So we must make sure, Guti, we at least got tanks that's got full water. We bring the tanks closer with tractors, and then we start watering the garden by hand with buckets. Uh, it's hard work, but we try our best, and then we water the garden. The dreams that I have for this place is taking this farm to another level, to be one of the best farmers. People can, you know, they can say, ah, those women, they work. You've created a cooperative as well? Yes. Okay, how, why? The reason I created a cooperative was I, look, this is a government uh, farm. Mm. I'm leasing it. Yeah. So my concern was, if God forbid something happens to me, maybe they can take it away and give it to somebody else. But if I've got a cooperative and it's a family cooperative, anything happens to me, they'll still carry on working. Mm. Now, what's your bigger vision? Well, my bigger vision is, I want to leave a legacy for these children. This farm I got, there was nothing. I've bought it so far, and I'm not satisfied with it. I'm classified as a commercial farmer, but I don't feel that I'm already a commercial farmer. There's still a lot of things that are short that I still need to do. My bigger version, I want to make sure that I create a lot of jobs for people. Already we've done that. We've got about 14 people working for us, and to help where I can with the poor people. You know, I don't just want to make money for me and my family. Look, farming is a business, but for me, it is not just about making money. It is about helping others as well. Yeah, I'm excited. I want to see what you've created here on King's Farms. It sounds, your story is absolutely amazing and I love it. Are you ready to show me? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Fantastic, let's do that. It's never easy for first-time farmers or first-generation farmers, but Loretta has been hands-on. And what we see now is a well-functioning King's Farm. I'm gonna to talk to her about her management practices and also what assistance she's been getting from who and how. Loretta, earlier on, you, you spoke to me about the fact that you are very hands-on. You had to put some of the infrastructure in yourself. But what I'm looking at right now, when I look around now, you've had assistance. Talk to me about that assistance. Yes, I've had assistance from SAB. Yeah. They've done a wonderful, wonderful job. They've sponsored me with these shade nets. Yeah. And not only do they put up the shade nets, everything that you see here comes from them. Putting up the infrastructure, the cold room, reservoir, the piping, even the product itself, even the workers that you see around here, SAB pays them for me. Now, how important is that assistance? It's very, very important. 
especially knowing that there's times that you don't make profit with other crops that you have. This helps me a lot because when I don't have money, they are able to pay them for me. Whatever money that I make, I'm able to put away so that by the time they leave me, I'm able to stand on my two feet and still carry on and make sure that this is a success. Tell me about your market. Well, our market is with, at this present moment, it's with Poxa alone. Reason being, we had a lot of problems with the looting and the lockdown. So we lost some of our contracts with pick and pay and with spa. So we're still negotiating. Hopefully, we'll get back on board with them. Oh, good luck with that one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, livestock, you know, you, you spoke about the diversity, uh, but livestock also, there's different aspects of management that come with livestock. You know, you, it's completely different from your vegetables and your mealies and so forth. How Definitely. do you manage that? Definitely. Well, with the help of uh, my husband, John, it makes it much easier. I manage it most of the time because I've got help here by the vegetables. So some of the time I'm there by the house. I've got uh, good working people, trustworthy people that are working with the livestock. But with the management, John, he does the books, which he'll take to Corbus, those that need to stay by Corbus. Sales, he does the sales when we have to sell. He does the receipts and all that. So he's the one that's mostly managing the livestock. Uh, record keeping when the Lani Guti was a Guti. Pelunyaga, who seven Zenjan, no good to lose the no more profit, Leganjan. He lent over to the wind record keeping. Utu was good to seven Zeganjan. Good livestock, yes, the step of a cool one over Nagu. As was no good thing in the lies by a new dag, a young Kelento. And it's the same guy being in my equipment, you would just clean a buyer's head so as you move a removal letter as a young girl. And my just pass a missing a cool line come in. The king's was a mass near face of Chicule, a pambil. Who's a wonga and a bantabany baboon a goody. You call into a mutum near my ends. Are you a big big one in Ubegelo pambil? Who's Missella Pen? Loretta, what type of livestock are we talking about? Okay, we're talking about cattle, mm -hmm. sheep, and pigs. The cattle that we have, we have two different breeds. We've got mixed breeds and we've got Ngunis. And the Ngunis is a stud breed. It was actually a loan from ITC. Who are you selling them to? What is your market for? With the... Our market is actually with the auctions and the guys from the societies, you know, these burial societies, they yeah. are the ones that support us a lot. Okay, fantastic. Now it's been raining a lot, yeah. a lot more than we expected. Sure. How, Tell is me that about affect, it. how is that affecting the management of your livestock? It affects a lot, which actually gives us a lot of work to do because, you know, the crawls, they get flooded, especially the open ones. Yeah. Lucky the goonies, they stay in a shed, it's closed up. But now there's these others where it's open, we have to rotate them, put them somewhere else and take out all that manure from there and clean it and then leave it for about a week in sunshine and then only you can put them back. Have you had any issues with uh, stock theft at all? A lot of attempts, mm. yes. I mean, if you've got things like that, that's your assets. You have to take care of them. I think you went through the yard there, you saw there's a yeah. two room there yeah. between the two crawls. That's where I sleep, me and John between our crawls, the one crawl the size, the one crawl, and we in the middle. We sleep there because we need to be close to the animals. Should anything happen, we put alarms and everything. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, these guys are very clever. What they do, they come with a shoebox and they close those beams uh, from the back. Yeah. So you can't hear anything. So when you're close by, at least if there's a noise at night or the dogs bark, you're out quickly. Pest management? That Maureen does all the recording. Mm -hmm. We spray chemicals, pest controls. She does the bookkeeping for all that. So what's your advice for somebody who wants to start out there, especially being a, a woman in farming in 2022? Well, my advice, first of all, farming is not for everybody, in anything for that matter. You have to do something which you love and have passion for. Because I can say, I would advise ladies to do farming. If it's not their passion, mm. it wouldn't work because there's a lot of challenges in farming. And if you don't have the love and the passion for it, you're never gonna make it. So I would advise them, if you do have the love and the passion for farming, go for it and be careful. The challenges that you meet, you will overcome them only if you're hardworking and you're hands-on. You cannot run a farm by a remote. It's never done. Loretta, if I could grant you one wish, 
for your operation, what would that be? Wow, Tony, that wish would be implements. Mm -hmm. Because I really need new implements. Working with old implements, which are giving me gray hairs. Yeah. So, yes. Through years of experience, Loretta Fisachi knows that on a farm, productivity is not the result of luck or chance. It's always the result of a commitment to excellence, intelligent planning, and focused effort. She practices good management of her operation daily, and the results speak for themselves. Welcome back to African Farming. Now, like any business, a farming operation requires good management practices at every single level. That's in order to keep things running optimally on a straight path towards productivity and, of course, profit. No one gets it perfect all the time, but turning those practices into habit will enhance your chances of success. As always, our agricultural gurus are here to share their knowledge on winning management practices. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Praveen from AFQI, are you well, sir? I'm great, thanks. Thanks for having me again. Fantastic, good to, uh, to have you with us. Ratsilane, are you well, sir? Thank you so much, I'm, I'm well. Okay, AFQI will let you join us uh, today. As always, good to see you. And uh, Lisa Marie from Flay Central, how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine, thanks, Tony. Good, good to see you. So Praveen, uh, what are some of the management principles uh, farmers need to be fair with and what do you think sometimes they neglect? So the, the key management principles, you know, your farm management, crop management, your spray program management, uh, how you're managing your mechanization program, et cetera, your planting schedules, those, those are things that farmers get, get right most of the time. Issues like human resource management, um, you know, labor relations, that type of, of skills you need to have at the tip of your fingers when you're managing a workforce. It's critical. We know that you know, we, we've had lots of issues in the agricultural sector and we need farmers to be aware that you know, these workers are protected by legislation. Make sure you have training when it comes to human resource management. Similarly, financial management, business management principles, uh, that's the make or break of businesses. So you, know, you can make as much money as you're making, but that doesn't necessarily translate into profit in the bank. So make sure from a financial management and a business management point of view, you've got those key skills to build your enterprise over time into a profitable venture. Rasilane, product management, what role does it play in animal health? It's, it's very important and it plays a huge role, Tony. When you look at the products that the farmers buy from the co-ops or uh, they buy from, from pharmaceutical companies, they are those ones that need to be kept away from direct sunlight. It's a product management on its own. They need to be kept away, locked uh, away from uninformed people. And then there are those ones that need to be kept in a refrigeration as well. Every product that whether is going to be used through the mouth or outside the skin or in, uh, through the rectum or through the vulva or anywhere even on the other, they've got a, 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 a a paper that is called packaging sets. It's very important that they follow the instructions that are written on those packaging sets. Failure to adhere to those things, it will lead to a lot of losses. Talking about losses uh, from an auction point of view, Lisa Marie, I mean, just transporting animals to an auction can cause stress to those animals and uh, ultimately, you know, you can take a hit on your pocket, but how do you manage such things? I fully agree with you, and, and I think that management comes from the, the farmer's side um, to maintain the right proper equipment to transport your animals with. Um, that lowers a lot of stress and, and you feel more comfortable moving your animals from your farm up until the auction, and you know they get there safely. Um, it also eliminates the risk of animals getting hurt or injured or even dying in transport, so it, it means a bit more profit in your pocket at the end of the day. Yourselves as an auction house, I mean, what steps do you take in terms of uh, just to maybe well, in, limit that stress? In recent years, we upgraded our biosecurity uh, a lot on the premises itself, and, and we do have a vet on site. And they also help to advise, um, especially farmers, you know, pig farmers, cattle farmers, um, sheep farmers, what parasites, uh, management, you know, stuff that they can do on the farm before they get to the, to the auction house. And then we also inspect the animals, you know, and, and, and we check and see if there's any problems on the animals per se before they can get sold. 
and that makes it a bit safer for the animals, the buyers and the farmer as well. Mm. Interesting. Now, Praveen, when it comes to just your basic management, uh, what would you say? I mean, a farmer might say, listen, I'm just, I need to focus when I do what, what I do best, which is farming. Is outsourcing a good idea? It can work, but it also depends on the size of your enterprise, of course. You know, if it's a big enough enterprise that can afford to outsource and, and pay those kind of fees that are required, great idea to do that. But then the person that is taking responsibility for that needs to have in-depth knowledge of your farming operations. You really need to be in sync with what I'm trying to do as a farmer, what I'm trying to do as the, the management team that's looking after their affairs outside of the farm. How do we make sure there's proper communication? Channels need to be open all of the time. If I decide to make a switch mid-season to, to different crops, different programs, for example, how do I make sure that's properly communicated? Communication's key in yeah, that. It's instance. interesting you say that because Loretta, she, she says to us, or she told us that um, her accountant, when she's not on the farm, he comes onto the farm. She's outsourcing that particular, uh, you know, uh, her, her accounting uh, to that accountant. He comes onto the farm. I want to talk about that. If you have a vet that comes onto your, you know, that you deal with, Ratsilani, uh, from an animal health perspective, what role, I mean, how involved do you get with a farmer? That relationship is very deep. The person that you entrust with your resources, is, it has to be somebody who's reliable. Um, you need to form a relationship that is um, uh, very personal and it, it, can la it, it should also last a very long time. The people that we entrust with our own, our own animals, one, they need to be uh, knowledgeable. They need to be able to transfer the knowledge. They need also to be able to be available whenever we need them. So you, you, you need somebody whom you can always talk to anytime. Uh, some vets, they, they even uh, accept calls even uh, at night. When you are working as a vet, there is, uh, there is no holiday. They call you when you are in a, in, in a holiday. So you must, you must be able, you must know that there are things that you can do um, in person and the, uh, about uh, part of your job also is going to be remotely. So let me get some uh, last comments from yourselves, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Praveen, starting with yourself. Yeah, establish and follow key and sound management principles. Keep your farm going for generations to come. Okay. Ratsilane? Um, make sure you remember withdrawal period. Read packaging sets for optimal production. Okay. Always read. That's, that's good advice. Uh, Lisa Marie? I would say management either on your, your property, your equipment, your herd, your crops. You can never do enough management. Okay. It's all about management. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Tony. Thank you so much, here. Tony. So it's a lot to manage, which is why a farmer's work is never done. So to all our farmers, we're grateful for all of your hard work, all the hard work you put in come rain or shine to feed the nation. Zadzi, why don't you show your appreciation for our farmers on the African Farming social media pages using hashtag African Farming or connect with us on our website, africanfarming.com. And as always, we farm better together.